Hello everyone, today we are making little hatchling griffins. These guys are actually part of a larger crochet challenge that I'm currently in the middle of doing. And this is the smallest version. However, the other few versions in that challenge are going to take quite a long time to finish. Therefore, you might not see that video for a while. But in the meantime, we can content ourselves with these little guys. Making these has given me the idea to miniaturize some of my other fantasy creatures. So you can see here I've got my hippocampus, my butterfly dragon, the little mandrake who's hiding over here. So I'm probably going to make miniature versions of those. But if you have any other suggestions, you know where to put those. But in the meantime, we can crochet ourselves a little griffin hatchling. So if you'd like to make your own, grab your hooks and let's get started. To make a griffin hatchling, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, some stuffing, a pair of nine millimeter safety eyes, as well as eight ply yarn in the colors of brown, yellow, white, and cream. We'll be starting off here with our little griffin's head. And to begin, we're just going to put six single crochet in a magic circle. Also for the head, I'll be using my cream yarn. and number six and then close that up round two is going to be six increases and an increase is just two single crochet in the same stitch i'll do one single crochet go back into the same stitch and make a second and that's one increase we're going to repeat this five more times to give us our six increases in total In round three, we're going to crochet the griffin's ears, and we do that by using a picot stitch. We're going to begin round three by just doing three single crochet. One, two, and then three. And in the next stitch, we're going to do our picot stitch, but we're going to do it in the front loop. The front loop is the part of the stitch that is closest to you, this part here. You'll go under the front loop and then single crochet. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, and three. The next step is to work into the back bump of the first chain. To find the back bump, look at your stitches from front on. You'll sh you should be able to see the Vs of the stitches. You've got your front and back loop here. If you turn those over, behind the front and back loop, there's a little bump of yarn. You can see the three little ridges almost here. We're going to work into the first one from the first chain. From this point when we've chained three, we're just going to go straight into that back bump, push the head of your hook under that, and then single crochet again. And that is our picot stitch done. And that means our first ear is complete. The next step of round three is to crochet four single crochet one two three and four and in the next stitch we're going to crochet our second ear we're going to do this the same way we'll go under the front loop single crochet then chain three one two and three go into the back bump of the first chain. And again, the back bump is the little bump of yarn behind the front and back loops. You're going to single crochet into that back bump and that is the placo stitch complete. Second ear, done. All we have to do now is single crochet into the three remaining stitches of the round. One, two, and three. For round four, we're going to start off by doing three single crochet. Two and three. And then what we're going to do is repeat one single crochet, one increase three times. However, the next stitch that we need to work into is actually the back bump we left when we did our picot stitch. So we did our picot stitches in the front loop and we left the back loop so we could work into them in round four here. So I'm going to go into that back loop. I'm going to single crochet. Now that's my first single crochet of the repeat. 
I'm then going to go into the single crochet that we did after the picot stitch, this one here. And that's where I'm going to place my first increase. Increase. I'm then going to do a single crochet and my second increase. And then a single crochet. And then my third and final increase needs to go into the back loop from our second picot stitch. So I'm going to put one and two single crochet in that back loop. To finish off round four, we're just going to do three single crochet across the remaining three stitches. And three. For round five, we're also going to start off with three single crochet, but then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase three times. And after that, you're going to finish again with three single crochet. After round five, we should have 18 stitches in our round. And both rounds six and seven are just going to be 18 single crochet. When round seven's finished, we're going to insert the safety eyes and you're going to insert those between rounds five and six, about five stitches apart, but it's more important to sort of get the eyes even with the ears than exactly five stitches apart. And one, two, three, four. I'm going to pop my first eye here. And what I might actually do is bump my eye size up a little bit because this yarn I'm using here is eight ply, but it's thicker than the yarn I usually use, which is here. And these eyes look a little bit small to me. So I'm going to grab my 12 mils. And I'm going to see how they look instead. They might be a little bit big, but I actually think that looks cuter, so I'm going to stick with it. So I'm going to use 12 millimeter instead of nine millimeter. Once you've got your eyes in, just put the backs on, and then we're just going to continue crocheting the final two rounds. Round eight is going to be one single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. And it's after round eight that we're going to stop and add the stuffing. You don't need to add too much stuffing because it's a very small piece and you don't want to overstuff it. When you've got all the stuffing in, we're going to crochet round nine, which is the final round. And that's just six decreases. To finish off, just cut a short tail and pull up with your hook. We're then going to weave this tail end in and close up this little hole. To do that, you're just going to thread the tail end through your needle. And then go under the front loops of the last six stitches. Start behind the front loop, push your needle, push your needle under it and forward towards you. One, two three, four, five, and six. Pull tightly on that end to close the hole. Insert your needle straight back into the center of round nine, our last round, and then just weave this tail end in through the body to secure it. And that's the head all finished. While I've got my cream yarn handy, I'm just going to crochet a few of the other details that require the cream. We're going to first do the feather ruffles and the feathers you can see go around the neck here. 
We'll crochet that next. We begin by making a slip knot. And then chaining 11. We're then just going to repeat back down the chain and starting in the second chain from the hook, one single crochet, one Pico stitch. A Pico stitch is what we use to crochet the ears. I'll do my first single crochet. And then to make the Pico stitch in the next stitch, we're going to go into that stitch, single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, Three, single crochet into the back bump of the first chain and then we're just going to repeat what we've just did single crochet in the next chain Pico stitch in the one after that chain three and then you're just going to repeat this five times in total all the way down the chain There's my last Pico stitch. What I like to do to finish off is just slip stitch into the base of the last chain where we did our last Pico stitch. And you're going to leave a tail so you can sew this onto the body later. The next piece that we're going to make, if I can find, yep, here's my end, found it. The next piece we're going to make are the head feathers and we actually use this pattern for both the head feathers and the tail feathers. So I'm going to crochet this first one in cream but then you'll also need to crochet one in brown. And we begin this by doing four single crochet, two, three and four. We're then going to slip stitch straight into the first chain that we made. Bring the head of your hook all the way down to the first chain and just slip stitch. At this point, we're now going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. We're again going to slip stitch into that very first chain we made, not the first chain of the chain five that we just did but the first chain of the original chain four. We're going to slip stitch into that space again. And this time we're going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. Once more, we're going to slip stitch into that original first chain, not the first chain of the chain four we just did, but the very first chain that we made. So one more slip stitch. And that's all we need to do to create the feathers for both the head and the tail. You'll need another tail for sewing this on. Pull up with your hook. And I'm going to set that aside. And now we're going to go on and crochet the beak. For the beak, I'm using this pale yellow color. And I'm going to begin that by doing four single crochet in a magic circle. And round two is also our final round. The beak is a very small pattern. And we're just going to do one single crochet, followed by two increases in a row. We're going to increase in the next stitch and increase again in the stitch after that. And we're going to finish round two by just doing one single crochet. And that's literally it. That's all we have to do for the beak. We're just going to leave a tail so we can sew that on. And then because I've got my yellow yarn out, I'm going to do the front legs next because they begin in yellow or gold or whatever color you want to do. We're also going to start those off with four single crochet in a magic circle. Both rounds two and three are also four single crochet, but it's probably easier if you just do eight single crochet in a row. I've done the first three stitches of round three, and I'm going to do the fourth one now. However, we need to change color on that one, the last one. So you'll do that by going into the stitch, 
you're going to yarn over and pull through so you have two loops on your hook but you're not going to finish the stitch in your yellow instead bring in whatever color you're using for the body of your griffin and in my case that's going to be this pale brown here you're going to line the end up behind your hook you're then going to yarn over in the new color pull through the two loops on your hook with that and complete the single crochet in your new color from this point we're just going to be working in our body color so we're going to chop that and set that aside round four is going to be one increase followed by three single crochet and then both rounds five and six are five single crochet each but like we did before you can just do the single crochet consecutively in this case you'll be doing 10 when you finish the first front leg you will then need to make a second and when those are done we will crochet the back legs for the back legs oh my yarn's tangled up here hang on a sec there we go for the back legs, we're also going to be starting off with four single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is an increase and then three single crochet. Round three is five single crochet. And then round four, which is the final round, is one increase followed by four single crochet. Crochet two back legs as well, and then we're going to crochet the body. All right, we begin the body by putting six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is three single crochet and an increase repeated three times. At the end of round three, we should have 15 stitches in our round and rounds four, five and six are each 15 single crochet. For round seven, we're going to start with five single crochet. We're then going to do three invisible decreases in a row, and we're going to finish the round with four single crochet. Round eight is just 12 single crochet. After round eight, we're going to add our stuffing to the body and like with the head, you don't want to overstuff this. So just add a little bit. When that's been added, we're going to continue on with round nine, which is four single crochet, then two decreases in a row and then four more single crochet. Our final round of the body, round 10, is just three single crochet, two decreases, and three more single crochet. And three. When you're finished, you'll need to leave a tail for sewing this onto the head. While you have your yarn body color handy, crochet another feather. So we did the head one before, you'll need to crochet one for the tail. And then we can go on and crochet the last pieces, which are going to be the wings. The wings are going to be worked in rows, and we're going to begin by making a slip knot and then chaining six, two, three, four, five, and six. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do two single crochet, one, and then two, 
in the next stitch we're going to place an increase and we're going to finish row one by doing two single crochet and two to start row two chain two one and two again starting in the second chain from the hook which is the first chain that we made we're going to do three single crochet three then an increase and then three more single crochet and I forgot to mention sorry that we need to be working in the back loops only for the wing pattern row one and row two should have been worked in the back loops only for row three we're also going to be chaining two one two but this time we're going to do in the back loops only four single crochet one increase and then four single crochet four leave a tail for sewing then crochet yourself a second wing and after that all our crocheting is done we just need to put our griffin together the first thing we're going to do is sew the head to the body now the body piece should curve at the belly and then go inwards in the chest this is the front of the piece so where it's straight at the back here that is our griffin's back we're going to pop that on our griffin on an angle so if we hold it like that you can see it's on sort of an angle this is the finished one here so you can see like that and I'm just going to pin that in place whoops fantastic okay I'm going to pin that in place and I think I actually might need to add a tiny little bit more stuffing to the neck here or even that might be a little bit too much but we'll see how we go nope that's okay okay so I'm pinning this in place and just look at your griffin from all angles make sure it looks okay so we've got it centered between the eyes here and I'm pretty happy with that so after that's in place you can go ahead and sew that on And then when it's done, I'm just going to weave the excess in through the body. The next pieces that I'm going to attach are the ones that need to go on the head. So that will be the beak, or is it the beak? And the head feathers. With the head feathers, you can weave in this slip knot end through the backs of your stitches here. But what I prefer to do is just sew the piece on with the longer tail and then weave that end in through the head because it's just so much easier. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm just going to plop that directly on the top of the head here. And you really only need one or two stitches in this thing and I'm sewing directly into that first chain that we made where we did all those slip stitches. And I'll do one more. Move tail, I can't see where I'm sewing. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to weave this end in. And then when I've secured that, I will come back and weave in this end. With the head feather secure, we're going to sew on the beak next. And I'm going to position mine with those two increases we did in the final round, which was just round two, at the top here. So you can see them there. So the beak curves up just a little bit. And I'm going to sit those down roughly in line with the bottom of the eyes. Now 
Next, we're going to sew on the legs and I like to sew on the front legs first. And what I'll do is I'll sit my griffin down on a flat surface, so like that. And as it's in that position, I'll then put the legs up to the body and I will hold them so that, like this, so that both the body and the bottom of the foot are in line with that flat surface. So I'll pin one on. And then I'll do the same, I'll line up the second. And when they're both pinned in place, I'll just sit my little griffin back down and make sure it's sitting so the feet are resting on the flat surface. When you've got them pinned in place, we're just going to make sure that they're lined up with the face. So I like to have between the legs lined up with the beak here. And I think I put that one a little bit too high. And all that's left to do now is sew those on. When the front legs are on, we're then going to sew the ruffle around the neck. And I prefer to do this before I do any of the other pieces just because there's less for the end to get caught on while you're sewing. All we're going to do is wrap this around the neck and we're going to sew it to the join between the head, that's the head, <laughs> the head and the body. This slip knot end, I'm going to do the same thing here that I did with the head feathers. I'm going to sew the whole piece on first and then I'm going to come back and weave it in through the body. But again, if you'd rather, you can just weave that in through the backs of your stitches. After we've sewn on the ruffle, we're then going to sew on the back legs. You'll once more sit your griffin down on a flat surface. And while it's sitting there, you're going to put the hind legs on either side and just keep them in place with a pin. Turn you around and pop the other one back here. And these are to help the griffin balance. So what you'll need to do once you've got them both pinned in place, sit your griffin on the flat surface and just leave it. And if he starts to wobble a little bit, just move your back legs. But if he sits there nice and still, you're good to go, sew those on. Alrighty, the hind legs are done. I'm now going to attach the tail feather and I'll be doing that the same way I did the head feathers. I'm just going to sit my little griffin down and put that right on his butt. So right there. And then finally, we're going to sew on the wings. And where's my other wing? I know I crocheted two. Aha, I found it. And what we're going to do is place the wings with the peak facing upwards. So that's the top of the wing there. And we're going to place one on this side. And we're going to get the end right in the middle there. And I'll sew, oh, ow, that was clever. I'll sew the wing